So one of the most common digestive issues that gets addressed in practical kinesiology is the hiatal hernia. Known as the great mimic in medicine, the domino effect for this particular issue is outstanding and it's one I cannot stress enough for my students and clients. In the torso, the diaphragm separates the lungs and heart in the chest cavity from the stomach, etc., um, in the abdomen. The chest cavity is a vacuum helping to keep air in the lungs at all times. The abdomen is crammed full of organs that seem to have nowhere to go. Everything's kind of tightly packed in a small area. The vacuum in the thoracic cavity helps to create a slight suction and the pressure of the contents of the abdomen does the rest. The upper portion of the stomach will slide up into the diaphragm causing several things to happen at once. One, the diaphragm does not move easily on respiration so some shortness of breath is common. Uh, two, the stomach musculature cannot function as easily, so some stomach upset and gas is common. Um, three, if the stomach slides far enough into the diaphragm, it may bulge above the diaphragm, encroaching on the heart and causing um, disturbing heart function. Um, so that'd be like heart palpitations. And four, difficulty breathing while lying on the back is common because of the pull on the diaphragm by the stomach. Now, those are some of the most noticeable ones. Um, most people will experience this as heartburn, and we're going to get into that. But here's where we get into some of the more serious stuff, okay? So, five, the upper portion of the stomach contains specialized cells called oxyntic cells. These cells are called upon when the stomach needs to break down proteins into similar components called amino acids. Proteins are too large and complex for blood absorption. In the stomach, they are broken down by acids to their simplest form. The acidic cells concentrate blood from the circulatory system into hydrochloric acid. The acid is very strong and when secreted into the stomach, will mix with the protein to release the amino acids. If the food is not protein, the acidic cells are dormant. When the upper portion of the stomach has slid up into the diaphragm, the acidic cells produce acid as requested, but it can't get to the food in the stomach. Instead, it stays in the upper portion of the stomach, irritating the lining. That's heartburn. Um, the demand for more acid produces a continuous frustrating cycle. Six, when the oxyntic cells draw from the blood to concentrate it and break, it do uh, break down the proteins, the blood is left with a, a, a higher pH than it can tolerate, and the kidneys now must work harder to bring it back to balance. Your kidneys use the urinary system to eliminate excess alkalinity left behind, normally causing a need to urinate shortly after a meal. However, if loss of fluid is great, a person um, becomes dehydrated a lot quicker. Seven. The excess alkalinity produced by the trapped up ascentic cells is often more than the kidneys can handle alone. So it turns to the skin and the lungs as well. <coughs> Pardon me. The lungs will expel the excess by breathing it out. But this also sets the throat up for bacterial growth as the pH level will be off balance as well. Tooth decay, bad breath, sores inside and around the mouth are common. Even possible ear infections stem from this. Perspiring through the skin will lead to skin problems and excess body odor. And then eight, if the hiatal hernia persists long enough, the blood will stay slightly alkaline, more than it should, and cause it to flow slower. The demands of the body will raise the blood pressure to compensate for the thicker blood to move around the system at its proper speed. So this is where we're now getting into increased blood pressure. Um, the minerals and heavier molecules around in the blood will precipitate out of the mainstream more easily, leading to deposition of fat, calcium, etc., in areas where the blood spreads out naturally locations like joints. 
This can produce arthritic-like symptoms and aches and pains that travel throughout the body that are kind of unexplainable. It's often tough for most people to imagine that just by learning to push their stomach back down, they can alleviate so much more than heartburn and gas. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what I typically use for, for people, and there was once where I think I bought like 60 tennis balls and, and literally gave them out and showed people how to do this. Um, you want to go... Hang on a second. I want to make sure that I'm capturing this properly. There we go. So you want to go where your rib cage meets, right in the middle. It's right below that. Okay. So you want to use your tennis ball and place the tennis ball right below that. Now, I prefer to lay down, face down on a flat, firm surface. I just find it works a little bit better. But if you sit up really straight, um, you can just place the ball there and then put your arms over top of it and push down. Okay, so just by taking care of this one itty bitty little problem, your life will get so much better. Stay tuned. I will talk about some more um, common issues as the week goes by. Bye.